Vani. I'm sorry I can't be there for today's episode, but I hope you guys have fun. I'm actually at an award ceremony called Carte Blanche, and Firefly has been nominated, so we hope we win. But you guys have fun, and I'll see you next episode. See ya! Hey, hey guys, welcome to Passion Pursuits. Uh, I'm here with, okay, I'm here with uh, a really great friend, what should I say? A really great friend, or, yeah, okay. I'm here with a really great friend, Thomas Tewold Manning, who is a CEO of TN Tech. Correct. And uh, we are right now in the beautiful Art Square Cafe and East Gallery in downtown Toronto. And uh, we're here to talk about passion. Mm -hmm. So Thomas, thank you very much for joining us today. It's my pleasure to be here. And uh, so let's get started. Tell us more about you know, who you are, uh, what exactly you do besides being CEO, mm -hmm. and uh, where you're coming from to our viewers. Okay, well, who am I? That's a, that's a loaded question. But uh, I would say I was uh, born in um, Eritrea, East right. Africa. I came to Canada at the age of 14 uh, as a refugee. Mm -hmm. And started high school, went to university, and I started, I, I studied computer engineering, uh, but I've always had an interest for business. Uh, so engineering was something, you know, I was curious about computers, so I, I did computer engineering just to fulfill my curiosity. Right. Uh, but I used that curiosity to, um, to fulfill my passion, which is for uh, business, right. to combine that with technology. So, which is when I created my uh, company, my pigeon company. Uh, so, you started this when you were in school, if, I, if I'm not Correct, wrong. when I was uh, in university. Well, right. actually part of my, uh, my, uh, my uh, business plan. Oh, okay. For school project. Okay, so uh, you, you're, for your degree in computer science. In computer engineering. Okay. Yes, yes. So you had a project for business planning and... Uh, yeah, and you know what, I mean, it was a course that I took, I was a uh, business uh, in the fourth year when I was about to graduate and a lot of people were doing business plans for hypothetical businesses, right. but they never had intention of or actually opening them, mm -hmm. starting up. But I, here I was actually had a plan to start this business. Right. So it was a you know, it was a double uh, benefit that I had by first you know, I was getting marks credit for it. At the same time, I was developing my business to uh, to grow to uh, right right. A good opportunity to get started. Exactly. And I guess you were forced to do it at the same. time. I was forced. I mean, a lot of people, you know, they laughed at Kickstart. Right. And I had an easy Kickstart because I have to get the marks. I had to pass my courses. That's great. That's great. So how did you find that stage? You know, when you were you were about to graduate, I assume, mm -hmm. and you wanted to start your business, but then your degree allowed you to basically start your business. So right. what did you go? What were you know the emotional? Uh, uh, you know, how, what are your emotions? Yeah. Yeah, no, I always challenge it because I see where I was graduating, a lot of my friends were getting jobs at all the top companies. Mm -hmm. uh, and here I am, you know, taking the risk. And I have offers from every other company, all the big companies out there, software companies. Right. And here I am, you know, saying no to that and start my own business. Yeah. So it was pretty challenging, I have to say. Uh, my parents didn't agree with it. They didn't um, agree. They didn't agree yeah. with it, and I, I can see from their point of view. You no, know, the idea was you no. Know, I had I had a secure job offer guaranteed me. You know, a seventy plus k. Oh wow. uh, A year. So yeah. it's uh, how do you leave that and start something from scratch? Mm -hmm. So that was uh, a decision that I had to make. It wasn't an easy one, uh, but I took the risk. Right. And with great risk comes great rewards, I guess. For sure. Okay, so so tell us more about uh, your company. It's a aging technology company. Correct. It's a technology company. Uh, the idea was I noticed when I was going to restaurants, right. uh, you know, you're waiting in the line, and you know what would happen is on a busy night, on like a Friday night, the restaurant would be very very busy. Mm -hmm. There'll be a lot of people lining up waiting for a table, and my idea was it would be very nice to catch disperse the crowd. Maybe they can go to the bar, maybe they can go outside for a smoke, maybe they want to go to a washroom, but they don't want to miss the line. So the idea of pager came to my head where that would be nice if you can just give everyone a pager. Mm -hmm. They can walk around, go to, go to the bar, and they're having a drink, and when the table's ready, they buzz them and get back and they get seated. Nice. That's how initially started. Mm -hmm. Now we've, we've evolved our product line now. Uh, we do what's called server paging. Now, you know, for example, uh, servers don't know when the food is ready in the kitchen. Oh, okay. They always go back and forth to guests seeing when the food will be ready. So now with the pager, the chef just pages it to let them know that the food is ready for pickup. So now they can serve a hot food right on time. Right. But uh, they're wasting time going back and forth between the kitchen and the floor. Yeah. 
that's, that's great. So you know, I assume restaurants are your main clients then? Yeah, restaurants is one of um, a portion of our client, mm -hmm. uh, but we have clients across every market you can think of. So the hospitality business is majority of where our market comes from, but we have uh, we have market share in the auto industry. Uh, car dealerships use our system when they want to pitch their guests or customers who are waiting for all change. Okay. We have uh, shoppers drug marts uh, using our system when people are waiting for prescription at the hospital and the clinic. Oh, wow. We have city of Toronto, city of Edmonton. Uh, we have uh, churches. That's we, pretty, pretty awesome clients, I yeah. say. We have, I mean, when we, this was obviously the intention when I started the business, but I realized there's a lot more need for it than initially anticipated. Right. And you just feel the void you know, when you come in the, in the business. That's, that's pretty cool. So, where were some of the challenges that you faced as you were starting? Because uh, definitely, you clearly had clients who wanted, you know, the product. But did you face, you know, as you were starting the business, did you face some of the challenges? Uh, what, were, what were the challenges in the industry? You know? The challenge I had is from the get-go. Uh, I designed as a computer engineer, electrical engineer. I had the technical background. So, so you designed all your products? We designed the initial, our initial oh, wow. product. And we found a manufacturer in China who would make the product. So they made the product for us, uh, with the custom name and everything. Right. And we're very excited we were waiting for our first shipment to arrive and our first demo system arrived. And we took it out of the box and me and my business partner, uh, we, we played with it and we realized that the product had a lot of defects. Oh. So when the LED light wasn't coming on properly, it wasn't vibrating. We realized we had to go through a lot of trials to actually have a proven product. And so that was that proved a challenge. So we actually went and found a company right. who was already making similar products, mm -hmm. uh, just make slight modifications uh, for us and give us the exclusive rights for Canada. Ah. Which is how we we became the main the biggest distributor in Canada. Right, now. right. So you didn't just reinvent reinvent the entire wheel, it just, you know, took something that was already existing. Exactly. Which was one of the smartest things an entrepreneur can do. Yeah, you never reinvent the wheel. And as a as a rookie, we tried to reinvent the wheel by right. creating our own product. I think that's what everybody tried to do until, until, yeah. until you bump into what you're and you learn, yeah, and you, you know, some people learn the hard way and I learned the hard way. We spent a lot of money creating that demo system which never really saw the light of day. Uh, it's still sitting in our inventory, funny enough. But uh, yes, we're not products, but when we got the exclusive rights, um, now we have staff here where we program them, customize them to best, depending which market we're using them, whether it's a restaurant or um, you know, uh, on a, a hospital, a clinic, right. or whatever. So we customize it and we program it to the fit, to, to the customer's fit. I see. I see. Well, that's pretty cool. So, how long did it take to get your first real client since you started? You know what? We actually got our first client when I was still in school. Oh wow! And that was one of the smartest things I did was I was busy in school with my exams and tests and stuff. I was engineering is pretty rough. Trying to balance that by itself. Right. So I went and seek out a business partner who was very talented, and I asked him to uh, become my partner. Mm -hmm. In exchange, you know, he had the, the time to push the business while I was in school. So you would, you would uh, advise about getting a partner when you're starting a business or what are the challenges for getting a partner? You know what, I mean a partner is crucial because when you can't be everything, right. right? If you don't have the time, you don't have the right skills, you don't have the right money, I mean as a sum missing component, mm -hmm. by all means get a partner. A lot of people try to get be greedy, they won't do everything themselves, but you, you know, it's, uh, you don't accomplish much by doing everything yourself. Right, right. So, and my, that was one of the smartest decisions I made was to get a partner because now when I was in school and my partner's out in the street pushing the product, uh, and our first biggest client was actually Jack Astros. Oh wow! And so we we hit the jackpot from the get go. Right. Who gave us the opportunity to test our system with them? Mm -hmm. They loved it, and next thing you know, they have that all Jack Astros locations. Oh wow! So. That's pretty cool. So you basically, as soon as you got out of school, it was already in the market. It was already, yeah, the business was already rolling. Uh, the day I finished my last exam was the day I met with the CEO of uh, you know, um, the manufacturing company. You know, it's a big company, it's thirty million dollars plus. Uh, it's a company, and he came to Toronto to visit with us. Okay. Had a dinner with us, and we pretty much went over everything, and you know, it was already rolling by the time I graduated. Fantastic. 
So what are, besides the fact that uh, the technical problems that you face when you're trying to invent your own product, what are other failures that you know, you're happy to have had uh, to be able to say that you succeeded in the business, right? Because everybody goes through failures, but are, are there any failures that you all are happy you, you went through, you know, to... You know what, every failure is a good opportunity to learn a lesson. Right. Sometimes it's a cheap failure, mm -hmm. so it's a cheap lesson. Sometimes it's very costly. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, we experienced every failure you could think, you think of uh, to work and not hire our first staff. Uh, you know, and that, that, that it's not as easy as you think when you hire staff. Right. You know? So how much people in your company today? We have a web for staff right now, full time staff. So how many, if I may ask, how many people? Twelve. Oh, twelve. Twelve cool staff. Okay. Right? We have now, and when we initially started, uh, we we hired our first team three staff, mm -hmm. and you know, to get we have to get them motivated because we realize you know these people don't have the same passion that you have for the business. Yeah. yeah. And you have to put the fire in them. Um, yeah. They were, you know, then we hired what's called an expert in sales, who pretty much sold nothing and cost us a lot of money. Uh, yeah. But you go through, you know, you go through trials where people cost you a lot of money to train them in. Now I see why companies are very scared, uh, you know, to uh, and you know, to in order to hire someone and, and invest in them, you won't get the returns. Mm -hmm. And I know how companies feel with someone leaves them so that they get the training. Right. Uh, so, so did you did you uh, partner with an agency to you know, provide to get you the perfect staff? Or did no, you we had, well we had um, we had a place to like, drop monster and things like okay. that where we had posted. Uh, so so you went to to look for them on your own. We did exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here at the beginning, you can't really afford to pay uh, anyone mm -hmm. a lot of money, so you try to save costs and cut corners and everything, everywhere you can. But that worked in your in your case. It worked now in our case. Eventually, we learned we know how to hire, to not hire. So, you know, we had some, of, we found some of the greatest employees that uh, we have still have today, and we had some, of, you know, bad employees who uh, cost us a lot of money, but taught us a lesson to, uh, you know, to, uh, to really be very critical of who you hire. Right. So, what is one advice that you can give, you know, when hiring people uh, and, and uh, keeping them? Because I think it's one of the hardest jobs to do, right? Or, yes. or, or training them, you know, to get the job perfectly done. Yeah, and I wish there was a formula to tell you how do you hire the right person. It's a, it's a tr error and trial thing. It's a trial and error. Uh, it has a big luck factor. You, know, you, you get lucky. Uh, and also, you know, you, you really do your homework. You do cross, the cross reference, check the reference of their experiences, um, and give them a trial before you actually hire them full time. So, right. put it on the probation period. Okay. Uh, things like that, as you know, something we learn afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so where do you see yourself, you know, in, in five years? Well, you're currently with three companies, you're not even 30, I assume. I'm not 30 yet. <laughs> <laughs> so where do you see yourself in five years? You know what? Five years, maybe. Maybe I'll, I'll be in Hawaii just chilling out. No, I'm playing with you. Uh, I will. You know what? It's. Uh, a lot of people, you know, look at me and they say, you know, uh, they think success is a destination, but it's not, right? It's uh, it's the experience that you go through, right? And that's what makes everything. So, um, I mean, you know, even even if I'm financially well, I will continue to do what I'm passionate about. I have my, you know, I have my interest for starting up businesses and seeing them grow. I have the you know the passion to help out people and see them grow. Right. Uh, so I'll continue to be, to be doing that. Uh, hopefully, you know, I'll I'll create I might help, help help the company to become a you know, the top you know Fortune 500 company. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. So that's great. You know, if that happens, uh, you know, I'll, uh, I'll take doing it. I'll take it for a treat. <laughs> yeah. So when do you plan to retire? I plan to retire uh, by 30. Oh, <laughs> well, I had heard the 40, but I've never heard the 30. Well, that's, that's uh, ambition. But well, when I say retire, you know, it's the idea of when, uh, you know, it's not financial motivation anymore that you wake up for. Mm -hmm. It's just doing what you love, when, you know, doing whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. Right, right. That's what, that's what retirement is about. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I don't have much of, you know, other questions, but, you know, what is passion to you? So at the end of the day, what does the passion mean to you? What's passion? Um, I think passion is the 
there's no explanation or for it. You know, you can't explain where it comes from. It has no so the source is unknown. Right. But it's your inner drive that you know, that will keep that will keep you go through all the doors, whether they're locked or not locked, uh, to get to where you want to get. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's passion to me. That you know, it's, it's a driving force that where to a point where nothing can stop you. Right. And you just keep driving. That's fantastic. Okay, well, so I think that was a lot of great advice. Do you have anything that can come to your mind as an advice before I pass on to our rapid fire round? Um, or one advice that you'd like to give to our passion years, you know? I would say um, people will come across a lot of challenges. You'll come across a lot of challenges in life. Right. And that is, you have to accept that challenge will always be there no matter what. Whether you're CEO of top Fortune 500 companies, or CEO of a company that's starting, just starting up. Or not even a CEO. Or not even a CEO. <laughs> right. Right? Uh, you're just on your way. Right. Uh, you know, you're crossing the street. You know, you have time challenge. Right. Expect them, but don't let them defeat you. Right? They will, they're there um, to, to do what they're supposed to do, make it stronger. And, and your job is to uh, keep going and not give up. So. Right. Fantastic. Okay, so. I hope you know what the Fire Rapid Round is all about. And I don't know actually what Okay. <laughs> so we have, uh, I have, you know, about 15 questions here. Okay. Uh, and you have about two to three seconds to get me an answer for those okay. questions. And it's very easy answers, you know, it's, it's a little bit more about to get to know more as well. Okay. So, you ready? I was born ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of his, his quotes, I was born ready, I should tweet that tonight. Yeah. So, what's your favorite book? Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> One car you can't wait to have? Uh, Lamborghini Mercy. Okay. Investor or entrepreneur? Investor. Real estate or your own company? Both. Adventures or risk covers? Adventures. Okay. Your best vacation yet? Going to Dubai. <laughs> Relationships to you mean? Relationship to? To you. What does that mean? Uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, thank God I got you here once. Oh God. Uh, what is come? You know what? What comes to your mind? When you talk in, in business or in anything? Um, yeah, in, in business, it's uh, having, you know, keeping everybody happy. Keeping everybody happy. Yeah. One thing you can't live without. My passion. <laughs> okay. Uh, what inspiring movie you watched recently? Oh god. Oh, you don't watch it? I, I don't know, I do watch it. I, I have some great movies. I would say Limitless is one of the most inspiring movies. Okay. Yeah. The first word that comes to you when I say P. Starting with P. A passion? It's starting with C. Mm. Character. Okay. Uh, what inspiring brand to you? Inspiring brand, brand to you, or brand that you like a lot. Uh, I would say Gucci. Gucci. <laughs> you like shopping at? You can't eat Gucci. Your mall. <laughs> your <Yorkia> mall. <laughs> okay. Three words that describe you. Ambitious. Mm -hmm. uh, rich taker. And caring. Caring. Great. Perfect. So. Uh, one last thing you'd like to say to our viewers, in three words. <laughs> um, live, love, life. Great. Well, that brings us to the end of our uh, coffee conversation for Passion Pursuits. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today, Thomas. And you know, pleasure. Uh, I know you're very, very busy trying to... You know, how many hours you work again? 16 hours or something? I was there for 16 hours. Eight hours a day. Eight hours. So know that. You know, I'm an entrepreneur. You have to be able to work 16 hours a day. Um, so yeah, thank you again for taking you know, some time off from your schedule and joining us today. Uh, it was awesome learning a lot of different things from you and I'm sure our viewers did the same. Uh, for more information, you can go on uh, our website uh, here and uh, you can also like us on Facebook, join and tweet our tweets. Uh, stay passionate. See you next time. Awesome. <laughs> that was good, man. That was good. That was good.
Yeah, that's